Hello. Hello Hi, Welcome to the 10th for the Friendship Association Sweden. My name is Christine Rundqvist and uh, I work as the Vice President in Stockholm for the Friendship Association. And I heard you are from Israel, so I would really like to know why are you here? Do you have a mission? It's so interesting to meet somebody from Israel, so please introduce yourself. My name is Gabriel Confino. Mm -hmm. I come from Haifa. Okay. And it's a very simple and strange story. Mm -hmm. I came from uh, six uh, weeks of sailing uh, from the western uh, Greece island uh, of uh, um, Lefkada back uh, to Haifa. And I had a terrible six weeks with an old couple. And I said to God, listen, I need to have another wonderful sail soon to forget the first one. And there was a festival in Israel, a film festival in Haifa, which I uh, filmed behind the screen. And a friend of mine called Ilan Ronen, mm -hmm. who is a very good friend, he's a sailor, a very, very old uh, friend. And an Israeli. In Israeli, yeah. Haifa, uh, who lived many, many years in Africa, did a lot of things over there. Uh, called me and said, listen, a boat is coming from Sweden with wonderful Swedish people. We have to welcome them in Herzliya. Could you help me with that? I said, listen, I don't have much connection in Herzliya because I come from our yachting club in Haifa, but I will try my best. So I have about 5,000 friends on Facebook, and one of them is Dana Haberman, who I never met, never talked to, and I said to her, could you please give me your private phone number? I have something interesting to tell you. It was bingo. I called her and she was so enthusiastic about this thing. She went to the mayor of Herzliya. She recruited him, his deputy. They cleaned the marina. They put flags of Sweden wow. and Israel. They put shields saying, yeah. Willkommen. Yeah. And I said, I'd like to have a nice banquet of beautiful food and music. I don't care who is going to make speeches. I know they, they, there will be Yitzhak Bachman, the yes. ex-ambassador, mm -hmm. who is a very nice person. Yes. And we were on a WhatsApp group uh, on the phone. And when I said that everything is ready, more or less, I called Stefan, captain. Yes. And I say, listen, I would like to fly to Cyprus and join you there to come back to Israel on our uh, mission. He said, yeah, come, my brother. Very happy to see you. So on the 9th of October last year, mm -hmm. I got on, on the boat and I met these wonderful people. We, we were 49 Swedes and three Israelis. Yes. Yes. And being a, a skipper and a <clears throat> sailor for 45 years, I knew that I could prevent and, and make it easier for the Elida to come into Israel with all these questions, mm -hmm. security questions. So when we were 60 miles away from Haifa, uh, the security, uh, the Navy called us and suddenly they hear somebody answering in Hebrew. Yeah. They were shocked. <laughs> For a moment I didn't, there was a silence. So I said to the lady, listen, I'm not giving you any answers now because we have got 49 suites on board. Just to spell their names, Olafsson and otherwise, it would be very difficult to take us one week. But I'll give you the name of and the, all the details of the captain and the three Israelis. When we approach Israel, I'll send you a list, a crew list. She said, okay. And um, I said to Stefan, why are you selling course to Haifa? We have to be at 3 o'clock in Herzliya. He said, no, 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 my friend. We will be there. I have got many friends on Facebook Israelis, about 400. I want them to see us sailing along the shore. I said, wonderful. And as we approach Haifa, the lady in the Navy says, you know, there's going to be, a, there's going to come towards you a gunboat. I said, please, do me a favor. It is all couple that I was sailing previously, months, uh, two months before. Uh, the most beautiful thing that happened was that the gunboat approached and there was a big shell saying, welcome, we have missed you. And there was music on a megaphone wow. of Arik Einstein, who is our, one of our yeah. best singers who yeah, yeah. died recently, a few years ago. And it says, we're so happy you came back home. It was the grandson of this couple who surprised them. He was the commander of that little gunboat. Fantastic. So I told the lady in the Navy, I, I'm not waiting for this kind of welcome. 
but at least don't put gunpoint, you know, on the Swedes. They're uh, peaceful people and they might be afraid. She said, don't worry, it'll be okay. And then the, the gunboat came, surrounded us once, about 230 meters away, and they called the captain and said, Dear captain, welcome to Israel, have a wonderful day, and they just left. So we were sailing towards Haifa, and this wonderful captain that I just met took his trumpet and he, he, he plays the Hatikva or Antony. And I was taking it on video and I was crying because I never met a person like that before. So we went all the way <clears throat> towards Erzelia and I asked Dana Haberman, my Your friend, dear yeah. friend, lady, please bring us Israeli flags. She came with a speedboat, fast boat, and she brought us 100 flags. And wow, every Israeli and every, every uh, Swiss and every Israeli had this flag, and we put it all around the, the boat. And when we came, when we approached Celia, 70 yachts and vessels and scouts, what have you, came out to our us. It was a bigger celebration yeah. that what I remember mm -hmm. in uh, the 70th birthday of Israel in Tel Aviv. It was something incredible. So from there it began. It was a small mission. Ah, another thing that I called, I am very friendly with Professor Dan Shechman, who got mm -hmm. the Nobel Prize in 2011 yeah. in Stockholm. So mm -hmm. I, I wrote him on the WhatsApp, mm -hmm. could you come and give us a speech? He said, oh, I'm sorry, I've got, I've got that. I'm, I'm now in St. Petersburg. It, it's difficult for me, but I'll, I'll see what I can do. And he shortened his visit there. He came specially and he gave us a wonderful speech. Wow. Yes, it was something unbelievable. And Stefan uh, said, I'm representing the ambassador of Sweden because he couldn't come. Mm -hmm. And he said those warm words about uh, Israel, the Jewish people, etc., etc. So I decided with Anna, I'm going to stay on the boat and I'm going to help out which uh, is to bring uh, people to the safe, to their hotels, uh, to uh, order uh, taxis, limousines, what have you, to take them to the airport so it won't be this good, the best prices. And we had to go to Ashdod, uh, the uh, southern part, sailing. I inquired a bit and I said it's a merchant uh, port. You cannot let people come on board, which we did on a clear. By the way, thousands and thousands of people came on board and they brought us presents and they brought the captain albums and they brought flowers and brought food and, and agriculture brought fruits and, and vegetables and, and there were ladies uh, if she was Moroccan she brought Moroccan food and if it was Persian she brought Persian food and some ladies cooked on the boat it was so exciting it was something that I've never experienced and the Swedes have never experienced and then we went first day we went to Jerusalem and uh, we were hosted by Isaac Bachman in the yeah. Ministry of Foreign yes. Affairs yes. Uh, for lunch and then we went to the Parliament and um, the last visit was to the ambassador in his office in Tel Aviv and he was very polite to me and asked me do you mind if I speak with my colleague Swedish I said of course there are 12 with four ministers and I'm only one and I said, okay, he's going to talk half an hour or so. The talk was about two hours. And I didn't know what to do. I just took pictures and pictures and pictures. The only sentence I understood was in English, ups and downs. I understood that's the relation between Israel and Sweden. And at the end of that, he let people ask him questions. So I said, Mr. Ambassador, uh, do you mind to repeat everything for me in English? So everybody was laughing, of course. I said, no, no, I'm from the social television, social media in Israel. I would like to interview you for two minutes. And it, it, it was a very nice interview. And at the end of it, I said, if this wonderful people save 4,500 miles all the way from Gothenburg to Herzliya to tell me they love me and my people and the Jewish people, I'm going to sail with them all the way to Sweden to tell your people I love them too. And that's why I'm here. And uh, on the way to uh, Spain, because we did the whole Mediterranean. Yes, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. I was uh, interviewed by a very nice uh, person from uh, our uh, official radio, um, Elihu Ben On is his name, in Italy. And Stefan and myself were interviewed by him. And um, 
I quite helped him out on the Greek islands because I know them very well. Mm. And I've sailed there many, many, many times all these 45 years. And uh, we had confirmation groups, which was for me something new mm. and very interesting yeah. because it's like yes. our bar mitzvah, but yeah. mitzvah yeah. we had. Exactly. And you know, I was so amazed mm. that Sven, the, um, the, uh, the priest, the, uh, priest says to me, he writes uh, the, the, the name Yud Hey Vav Hey, mm. and I say, we cannot pronounce it, we call it Yud Hey Vav Hey, but you have know. written it nicely, mm. you've written it right, and then he writes, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Chad, in English and in Swedish, and I said, boy, they, they're studying the Bible, my Bible, the, 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 the same Bible that I've studied in school, and when we came to Rhodos, I spoke to Stefan, I said, do you mind if I take all these children to the synagogue where I've been in Rosh Hashanah in the New Year's Eve? Yeah. And he said, yes, sure, that'll be a good idea. Mm -hmm. And we went, they went after me, 42 people, mm -hmm. 20 minutes, and we went into the synagogue, mm -hmm. and the uh, lady who runs that synagogue and the museum gave them a speech about the Holocaust, about those who were taken from there, the 3,000 Jews, and... Uh, I spoke about my life because every crew member, every day when there was a prayer, spoke about his life, how did he come to the leader. So I spoke and explained to them where I come from uh, and how I have prayed there in the same synagogue the first time as a Kohen, which I discovered only four years before that I am a Kohen and got on the bench in, on, on Rosh Hashanah, which was for me very amazing. Mm. And uh, from there, we went to Rome. Mm. And yeah, in Rome, yeah. very few of the mm. Swedes have been to Rome. Mm. Only um, Simon, one of the crew, and my friend, and myself. So we took them all the way to the Vatican, and I shot live on Facebook, and it was a celebration. Uh, so we, we went all the way to Cartagena, mm. and uh, it was Christmas time. So yeah. the Swedes went home, and I went to Israel, and we met again. On the 20th of January, on the 21st, we started moving towards Gibraltar, mm. from there to the Canary Islands. Mm. And again, I was so surprised that the group that we had in Israel, I call them Little Abba. They were <laughs> singers and, yeah. and musicians, yeah. wonderful musicians, and we were here now in, in Almedolan. Yeah. They um, performed, we performed for nearly two months, I think, in yes. Scandinavian yes. Uh, churches, yeah. on the pier, yeah. on the boat. Yeah. The most amazing was to go along the shore, to see these hundreds of hotels mm. with thousands of rooms. People are waiting mm. for the music yeah. with the loudspeakers. So it, it was unbelievable uh, for me and very exciting yeah. to be with these people. Uh, to me, because I, I could read about this happening yeah. when you arrived to Israel and to Herzliya, yeah. and I was very impressed with what happened and what you did there. And I saw, as you know, Isaac Bachman was our former ambassador and we all love him so much. And I could see all these people and all the uh, boats that came to meet you and all of that. And then I live in Sweden and here was, of course, our two Christian papers wrote about this, but nobody else even mentioned it. And you think that we have so much speaking about uh, the ship to Gaza. Not one line in the big magazines or in TV of ship to Israel. And then I, that's why I wonder, how do you feel when you come to Sweden and you have met these people who are very, very friendly and they, they believe in the same Bible and they are sort of very loving people. And then you see the Swedish government and the Swedish society being so unfriendly to Israel. So what is your opinion when you have been here? So I tell you, the reason I came here once more is yeah. not only to be on the Elida and to be part of the Elida, which I call my second yeah. home. Yeah. It was to interview this lady, Margaret Wallström. Yes. Because I said to myself in Israel, and I told all my friends, I'm mm. going to interview this lady. Yeah. I want to know why does she hate me and my people. Yeah. And I know, because I did a research about her, mm. it's all personal interest. She wanted to get to, you know, to the uh, Security Council. And the only vote yeah. she can get is the Arab vote. Yes. So, yes. what she did is what she does, and, and her opinion is very difficult to be changed. And um, I decided to ask her questions, and mm -hmm. I've prepared many, many questions. Yeah. But you know what? 
since I'm here now for four days, since uh, all these politicians came here, I approached the different secretaries to ask for interviews with your finance minister. Your Magdalena partner. Anderson. No, no, it's a, it's a, it's a, a man, it's Per Bullen. He is his partner. Aha, Per Bullen, yes. Per Bullen. Mm -hmm. uh, so she said to me, well, I will try, I will see. I called her once, I called her twice. No way. The schedule was too tight, she said, etc., etc. So I, I met him in the cathedral where yeah. I visited with the confirmation kids. Yes. In the morning, we yeah. had, uh, yeah, we had a guidance over yes. there, and in the evening it looked completely different. Mm -hmm. And there was standing uh, uh, the minister and speaking. He's, he's the leader of the Green Party of Youth, yes. and he was speaking and getting questions which I didn't understand. It's Swedish, but then when it's all finished, I just ran towards him, shake his hand gave him my card and said, I'm a journalist from Israel. And your uh, Mrs. Uh, Frida, who is your secretary, tried to arrange a kind of uh, um, interview. So maybe we'll have an interview tomorrow. Uh, did, you, did you hear about the Elida, I said? He said, no. Did you hear about sailing for Jesus? No. I said, you know why? Because your government is linked with the TV channel one, two, and four and they are not pro-Israel because you are not pro-Israel. Mm -hmm. And nothing has been mentioned. But you know, these people are very wonderful people. They came all the way, 4,500 miles. And Mr. Stefan Abramson got the prize against racism in your country. Mm -hmm. And nothing was mentioned anywhere in the general mm -hmm. media, only the Christian media. It's a shame. Mm -hmm. That's why I want to interview mm -hmm. them. They said, yeah, we might find, we might find a place. Mm -hmm. We might find a place. So um, I hope you can meet him then. Uh, I want to ask you too, because yeah. as an Israeli, as having seen what they do on Elida yeah. and having seen what is happening in Sweden, even though you don't read Swedish, you know what's happening. You yeah. know what Sweden are doing. And you know the Security Council and everything where they want it yeah. to be. And you know all the corruption against that. But what do you think we can do as Friendship Association for Israel, Sweden, Israel? And we are really keen to change the media picture. We want the media, but preferably we want the politicians to change their minds, to know about, not as a propaganda, not as anything else, but to tell them the truth about Only Israel. Truth. And how could we do, have you got any suggestions or any expectations on what we as a Swedish group can do to change? Yeah, I think the most important thing is to get into the general media mm -hmm. because nowadays this is the place where people are brainwashed mm -hmm. to the better or to yeah. the worse and the Swedish people have no knowledge whatever they see on TV or hear on the radio or mm -hmm. reading newspapers mm -hmm. that's what they get mm -hmm. so you get people around here saying things they don't know anything about mm -hmm. and I'm not talking about Palestinians there are people who are trying to, to get the, their reason but I'm talking about Swedish, yeah. simple people, and I've talked to many of them. Mm -hmm. And I think I've changed the mind. You know, I had a talk now when we came to this uh, five days mm -hmm. trip mm -hmm. from uh, Gothenburg here. Mm -hmm. uh, they asked me to speak to seven of these confirmation kids. Yeah. And I spoke to them for one and a half hours. Mm -hmm. And I explained them the conflict. And I'm sure they are going to be the best ambassadors in their schools when the teachers will say something, they will say, no, no, we spoke to a Gabriel, mm -hmm. he was an officer in the army, and he got us the... the mm -hmm. So, uh, we have to, to hear both sides. Mm -hmm. It cannot be one-sided. Exactly. And I wrote to the secretary of Mr. Boland, uh, I gave her a question, ten questions. And I said, I would like to get answers by writing, as you didn't give me the interview. Mm -hmm. And I'm still waiting. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to leave that like that. I'm mm -hmm. going to... And I'm going to the um, uh, CEO yep. of Channel 4, yes. which I yes. did before. Mm -hmm. And I said, you should come mm -hmm. and uh, uh, give us an interview. Mm -hmm. Stefan deserves it. Mm -hmm. These are wonderful people. Mm -hmm. You have to show everything, not only one mm -hmm. side of this yeah. country. You should show other people's mm -hmm. opinions. Mm -hmm. And I think most of the Swedish, I'm for sure, like the Israeli people, the Jewish people. It's just a question of giving them more knowledge. And exactly. if you give it to them, it's through the internet, through the media, 
through uh, television, through radio. Otherwise, so you have to find the way. I'm trying with my little uh, power. I'm trying now to go to the um, this lady le leader. Yeah. I didn't know about her anything, but I heard she's pro-Israel. She's uh, the second party pro-Israel mm -hmm. that exists here, mm -hmm. and I'm going to talk to her yeah. if I if get an opportunity. And I believe that this time I will get it. Yes, it's you can speak with her. Yeah, sure. I have to speak. Very with nice. Her. Yeah. Yeah. I took some uh, photos when yeah. she gave her yeah. speech yeah. in a tent. So. Tonight she will give her speech at 7 o'clock, I'll be there, and in the evening at 10 o'clock I go to the, the cathedral and I really hope to have an interview with her because we have to change people's opinion here. Mm -hmm. And it will come from, from down upwards. Mm -hmm. And I told the same to uh, my, one of the, my best friends, uh, is Anders Peter. Mm -hmm. And I read uh, from the Bible in Hebrew in his mm -hmm. church and in Magnus's church. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have interviewed the um, um, bishop lady, uh, Susan of Göteborg, and her answers weren't sufficient. No, but I think, as you know, that the Swedish church has been so politicized, yeah, and they are not even talking the truth, because they are not true to what they are there to preach, because they don't follow the Bible, and they have this... Uh, Marxist leftist agenda. So, what we are trying to do now, also starting this autumn, I've met with people here both last year and now. We have all the young people in the two uh, conservative parties, Moderaterna and Kodik, the Christ Democrats, yeah. and they are very interested and keen to go out to schools because we started, Maria and I, and we said, Well, we are two elderly ladies, why don't you try to find young people? And they are very interested. So we are starting a education, which eventually will give them a diploma from Simon Wiesenthal Center, as we know them very well from Los Angeles and Paris. But we are trying to start an education of all these young people, all of them, and to have them to go out to schools all over Sweden. And there I also wonder, is it something that you would like us to do there? We are going to try to tell them about the history of Israel, and just that truth will change everything for them. We are also letting them meet survivors from Holocaust. We have, of course, many friends there. But is it something that you think this you should do? You should invite these people. You should ask of course, whoever. Of course, and I heard something very nice yeah? from the uh, Sven, the priest, that yeah? uh, these children, when they get to this kind of age, 14, mm -hmm. 15, yeah. they are being taken to Auschwitz. Yes. Groups. Yes. And it's very, very important for them to learn so they will know okay, that yeah. Israel mm -hmm. is a state of existence and mm -hmm. it has so many enemies mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. And we have been, I always tell the Swedes, for you it's very easy. You haven't had war for 200 years. But me as an Israeli, and I'm only 73, we have wars now for 125 years. And it's a very difficult situation. It's very easy to say you are aggressors, you are so and so. I would like to hear from Margaret Wallström. What's her uh, attitude? What does she think? How would we behave with the Palestinians? What should we do to save these problems? It's very easy to criticize, but uh, the question is how? Exactly. And we're trying. Mm -hmm. We're trying. We don't have a pot. We know we don't have a pot. This, this for sure. And we have, unfortunately, we have the Hamas in the south yes, of yes. Gaza, and we have Hezbollah mm. on the north, and all of them are pointing rockets at us mm. and shooting rockets, not mm. from the north now because they got the, the mm. strike mm. on the last uh, Lebanon war, but still it's a dangerous situation, a very dangerous yeah, I, situation. I, I think people in Sweden don't know about this, because I, I was I in, the, in the subway yeah. going to Kaidea, I have studied yeah. one year Jewish studies, yeah. and this morning it was something wrong with the sub, with the tunnel bar of the subway, yeah. and we were coming a bit into a tunnel and then it stopped, and it came two meters and it stopped, and the driver said, "I don't know, it's something wrong here. I don't know what it is." And then we, it was just after we had had some terrorist uh, attacks. Not uh, they have uh, sort of aborted them, but people were a bit afraid, and then I could hear a very strong noise, and I thought, "I wonder what is this." Till I understood it is in my bag, so I took it, my telephone out, yeah. and I have this red alert, and it was sounding, of course, very, very high. 
and people were looking at me, looking like they were going to die. And then I said to them, you can be happy, we're just in a, in a tunnel waiting for the subway to start in Stockholm. But when you heard this signal start, people in Israel have between 5 and 30 seconds to get to the shelter with their kids, with their elderly people, because Hamas is shooting their rockets on people in Israel. What? Yeah, this is what you don't hear in the media, but this is the truth. And I think for me it's so important how do we convey to people these atrocities, not as you say, we are maybe hurt by peace because we don't understand what war is. And that's what we want to convey to these young people. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, two months ago, yeah. I called my son when I was here. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, he told me, did you hear? A missile came from Gaza and yeah. fell after Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. It was a, a place, yeah. a little moshav, and it destroyed the whole house. People were, one lady was injured yeah. slightly, yeah. but at yeah. five o'clock in the morning, he had to take his, my two granddaughters into a shelter. Mm -hmm. And he could hardly get up in that, and, and do it in 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. It was too late anyway. And it, uh, the rocket fell and destroyed that house. So, people haven't heard about it in Sweden. No, I know. They heard two days later that a lady in, um, in, in, um, in Gaza was killed, uh, or a baby or whatever. Uh, this is part of life in Israel, daily life. Mm -hmm. But coming back so to... I think we have to wrap yeah, up here. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was very nice to nice. speak to you. And if you have any ideas, so yeah. please don't hesitate to contact us Thank to tell much. us what we should yes, do, because yes. we are really keen on changing yeah. I'm learning, I'm learning the situation yeah. now and yeah. I, I, I get yeah. to know more and more and so yeah. I give uh, one of the things that we talked previously mm -hmm. was about the church. Yeah. Now I know that it, I saw when I talked to Susanna I knew that she is a polit political appointment. Yeah. Now so I understand there is one archbishop lady the first one who is in Sweden yeah. who is anti Auntie and she is like mm -hmm. uh, Margaret Wallström yeah. on the political exactly. side and then you have all these bishops were appointed. But then the beautiful thing is that the priests, like Anders, like Sven, like other people, yeah, uh, people. Uh, like uh, Magnus, they love Israel, yeah. they love the people of Israel, they speak mm. about Judaism in a favorite mm. way. And I told them, you are, you have got the worshippers, you've got the people around you. It should come from down up 